It is popular known as breakdancing, but if you go around calling it that, some might look at you a little sideways and tell you it's called breaking. The quintessential hip hop dance is considered the physical element of the five pillars of hip hop. And tonight, as part of our ongoing coverage of the 50th anniversary of hip hop, we give you a look at the past and future of breaking. Here's ABC's Ashim Singh. In the South Bronx in the 1970s, a new kind of dance was emerging. Anyone could do it, and it didn't require much, besides maybe a piece of cardboard. Breaks in between songs gave dancers a chance to show up and show off. It's called breaking, and don't call it breakdancing. Breaking is a term that they've developed too. It was b-boying. You know, b-boys to me meant Breakers, Boogie Boys, Bronx Boys, B-Boys, you know, the Bronx, uh -huh. you know, we were B-Boys. The history of breaking is closely intertwined with hip hop. And hip hop history lives in its birthplace, the Bronx, at the Universal Hip Hop Museum. Tony, Mr. Wave Wesley, was there from the beginning. It was a concrete jungle, that's what it was. And so, just think about it, all of a sudden, Thousands of kids learn these magnificent tools. You've never been to school for music. You've never been to dance school. You're not an artist. But despite not being an artist in the traditional sense, Tony eventually got noticed by a dance group called the NYC Breakers. And the rest is history. What did that mean back then to get a shot at being in the New York City Breakers. We could simply couldn't walk the streets. The kids were so empowered and they just wanted to be around us and we gave them that. I, I danced so much uh, 20, 30 times a day every time I walked, you know, because of the film Beach Street. And then we did Soul Train. Good morning, America. That running dialogue to a steady beat is called rap music and the mechanical kind of dancing is known as electric boogie, both originated on the city streets of our country. Yo. At what point did you realize this is bigger than the Bronx? That this art form is now traveling beyond where you grew up and, and it's captivating the youth everywhere? The first show, because it, it made me see there's something bigger than the Bronx. Mm -hmm. So the first show was massive for me, but Harry Belafonte, who you have to give praise to, he was the catalyst when he did the movie Beach Street. Then stop looking, listen, and check this out. Beach Street. Beach Street. So the evolution is what you're seeing. And this evolution is caused by cameras, film, YouTube. But you know, it's evolving so much that the Olympics had to take a look at it. At next year's Summer Olympics in Paris, for the first time ever, Breakers from all over the world will compete for the gold medal. The challenge for them in the Olympic is to be able to score. You don't have to do 65 head spins. You have to be coordinated to where that number hits its mark. Similar to the gymnastics, they, they flip, flip, flip. If they step one foot back, they lose a point. Sonny Choi is ready for that challenge. The Queens based breaker is one of few Olympians chosen to represent the U.S. at the Olympics in Paris next year. I have decided to pursue the thing that I loved in life, you know. I mean, working corporate, having a paycheck, it was definitely really scary to give that all up, to pursue breaking full-time. Oh. A risk that she says paid off. A few months in, how does it feel? Liberating? It feels good. <laughs> it feels so good. I like never look back. You're a Korean American woman performing a historically black art form. And it's 50 years of hip hop. What does it say about you being here in this time, about the culture's growth and, and the heights that it's reached? I've actually always struggled with my place in hip hop because I'm a Korean American woman, because I felt like I don't quite belong or I don't quite fit. What I've learned over time is like this whole culture has been so open and actually warm and welcoming to me. And it was really just me telling myself I didn't belong. Even when I first started breaking, I used to just sit in the corner and just watch everyone else dance because I was too scared to actually do it myself. 
Most breaking pioneers have embraced the terms b-boy and b-girl, separating the sexes. So this is all the hardware. It is some of it. <laughs> Troy goes by b-girl Sunny in the breaking community, but her b-girl title hasn't stopped her from winning battles against her fellow male competitors. How does the sport change for women? There's actually a lot more opportunity now for women than there were before. There were always women in the scene, but it's like, so many of them people didn't really talk about or they're kind of in the background or you had like one token B-girl in your crew. As she prepares for the Olympics next year, it's an opportunity not just for B-girl Sunny, but for all young women and the next generation of breakers. And I just feel like hopefully with everything that the Olympics brings in terms of exposure and money that that also funnels back into the community. Because if you know the history, then you can take that and really move the art form in a direction that feels true as opposed to not knowing the history and then doing whatever you want with it. History that was made by an OG like Tony and will continue to live on in this museum. The museum will inspire him to look backwards and see what we've done. I mean, I don't think anybody else will be able to dance with three presidents like I did. That's mine. You can't erase me. Our thanks to Ashen for that. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.